Greetings from BioB. My name is Amit Sadeh. I am from the field R&D of BioB. And today I'm going to talk about biological based IPM in the greenhouse, in the field, in the orchards and vineyards. Let's start. BioB is a, an Israeli company which is located at Kibbutz de Eliyahu in the Jordan Valley. Uh, this is a, an aerial photo of our facilities. And we have subsidiaries uh, in different countries around the world, uh, as you can see in this map. And also we have uh, distributors and other business partners all over the globe. So we are covering the entire globe. Our fields of activity are focused on, on several different aspects. We have integrated pest management, natural pollination using bumblebees. We have other plant protection products and some other complementary products. The guiding principles of our work is that we believe we can create a healthy agriculture using uh, IPM to reduce the use of chemicals. We also are uh, striving for innovation. We have a big R&D department. And most of all, we have a very, prof very high professional team, which gives a, a full support for the growers to achieve the maximum quality of their crops. We'll talk a little bit about the biological-based uh, IPM. Uh, we have uh, different products to achieve that. Uh, the method is based on the use of beneficial insects against harmful insects. So basically what we do, we use natural enemies, uh, as we said, beneficial insects and mites, as an alternative to pesticides which are harmful to humans. The IPM method creates an ecological balance in the crop, which ensures that the level of the pest population is kept continuously under the economic threshold. So as, a, as we already seen, we have different natural enemies uh, that we are using in, in, uh, in vegetables. We'll talk uh, about some of them in, in this presentation. Um, but basically we have different tools, different insects to, to achieve uh, a different control of different press. Now, I would like to focus on uh, a model for a successful IPM. Uh, and in this case is, is sweet pepper. Uh, it is really a, a good example of how can IPM achieve a very good result. And in, in sweet pepper, we have uh, different pests, as you can see here in this picture. Uh, this is the list of the major pests that we usually encounter in Israel and around the Mediterranean area. And I, I would say that the worst of them would be the thrips. Uh, a thrips is a major threat to many crops, not just sweet pepper, because it is extremely polyphagous. It has rapid multiplication. It can penetrate 50 mesh nets. And worst of all, it will transmit virus diseases. Now, in order to control thrips, we have two generalist predators. Uh, when I say generalist, I mean that they are not preying on a single source of food or a single prey. Rather, they will, they will prey on a spectrum of many pests, of different pests. And also, it, they can feed on, uh, on alternative food sources, such as pollen, which is present in the flowers. So the traditional IPM program in sweet pepper is based on a preventive release of these two generalists, the Aureus levigatus and Amblyseus risky. But there is a limitation to this method. Uh, and the problem is that, uh, as mentioned, we can use the pollen as, an, as a source of food to establish a population of these predators, but you cannot release them before you have flowers present at the crop. And this may take a while, um, around four to six or even seven weeks, uh, where you cannot establish your predators. And in the meantime, the problem is that the pest will certainly will not wait. So you may have a situation where um, you have to take other measures. For example, most growers will use uh, chemicals in the meantime to control the pests. And the problem with that is that you may have negative side effects because of the chemical residues. So once you do release your predators, you may have complication where they're not establishing as well as they should have. 
And the, the worst thing is that sometimes you also have problems with, with the virus, which is transmitted by the trips. Uh, in this case, it's the TSWV, which can have a lot of uh, damage to the crop. Uh, you can see it as early as several weeks after transplanting. And sometimes you get a real epidemic, uh, not, of course, not the current ep epidemic that I'm talking about, a rather uh, epidemic of a TSWV where you have to um, unfortunately remove many, many uh, infected plants. So what would be the solution? Well, we need to feed our predators and to build a standing army before we have problems with the pests. And in order to do that, we simply have to feed them that's all just get them food and then they will establish um, and we have developed at BioBee uh, a solution for that we have a complementary uh, food uh, product which is called bio art feed you can see it here in this picture uh, it is based on artemia cysts and it is a high quality food for biological control agents uh, it is suitable for a wide range of predators, not just one, but you can feed many predators uh, in parallel. It is durable under field conditions, uh, and you have a possibility to store it for a long time, or if you want to ship it to, to other countries, it is uh, very much uh, possible. And la last but not least, it does not feed the pests, only your predators. So. Uh, we developed at BioBee a novel approach, which is based on the release of, of our predators all the way back at the nursery, which is the early, early, as early as you can, uh, actually. You can see here in this picture, uh, a BioBee technician is releasing Amblyseus risky at the nursery directly on the seedlings just before they are packed and shipped to the grower. So basically, the grower will receive a preloaded uh, seedlings which are already has its uh, population of predators uh, on these seedlings and it, 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 they can plant it or plant the, the, the plants uh, when they are already occupied by the predators. So this uh, novel approach is very, very uh, efficient and very easy to implement. Uh, here in this picture you can see releasing Aureus levigatus uh, uh, on, on the crop uh, just after transplanting and you can see the Artemia cyst and you can see that the Aureus is feeding on the Artemia. Uh, here you can see uh, after a few days we can see our, our uh, technicians, the BioBee technicians or the field uh, service guys, they are very professional and they can identify uh, the signs of establishment of Aureus. In this case they can see the Aureus eggs which are laid inside the plant uh, as I said, our, our guys can identify it and they can see that uh, everything is going according to, to plan. And after a few more days, we should expect to see uh, the, the second generation, in this case, the Aureus nymphs. And in this picture, you can see uh, this nymph is feeding on the Artemisis. And also, we have talked about Sriski, which is a predatory mite. And we can identify, again, signs of establishment where Sriski is laying its eggs on the crop. And once you have the first flowers after four to six weeks, you can already have a very nice, nice population of Aureus. You can see there are so many Aureus in, in the flower. When you have this kind of situation, the trips doesn't stand uh, any chance to, to, you know, to establish in the crop and cause any, any damage. Um, let me show you an, exp an experiment we did to test this, the efficacy of this system. Uh, we compared two, uh, two approaches. We had the traditional practice, uh, which is based on, um, we, we used uh, seedlings which were not sprayed at the nursery because we want them to, to be uh, kept free from any chemicals. But in the traditional uh, practice, after transplanting, as I said, the grower took some chemical sprays. And after about 30 days, uh, we started the release prog program of the beneficials. In the novel practice, we released these, uh, these predators uh, directly on the seedlings from day one. And after transplanting, we kept on reinforcing the population every week until we got uh, uh, the first flowers. And then we just uh, kept on you know, 
collecting data. And these are the results you can see in the upper graph. This is the population of our predator, of the aureus. And you can see here on the blue line is the novel approach, meaning that we released them on the day of transplanting, which was here. And you can see a very nice buildup of the population. Here you can see the, the, the mean frequency of aureus per plant. And you can see that after around five to six weeks, you, you had a, a full-on population everywhere. And only here, after five weeks, we just started the release program for the, the traditional program of the, the no food. And you can see the big differences between the time the population uh, could uh, really establish in the crop. And if you look at the bottom graph, you can see uh, that it has a, a huge impact on the control of thrips. As you can see here in the, in the blue line, you can see a very, very mild appearance of thrips in the crop. While in the traditional, um, in the traditional protocol, the thrips did have enough time before Aureus has established. It had some window of, of opportunity to establish in the crop. Of course, once the Aureus has established, it also did control trips. So anyway, we had a nice results even in the traditional protocol. But you can see that there is a big difference if you start very early on in the crop, and you can only do it when you're using bioart feed. Now we can uh, apply the same principle for other crops as well. Uh, for example, in cucumber, also we, we did the same, uh, the same uh, uh, practice, releasing directly on the seedlings. Uh, here again, you can see a, an example of when you use uh, the bio art feed, the Artemia, comparing to no food or comparing to a chemical control only, you get a, a superior control of pests such as spider mice and thrips. Uh, this is a picture from our trial. You can see these are the, the Swirsky mites. You can see them uh, building up a very, very nice population and the, the nice coloration of the body is an indication that the Swirsky is feeding on Artemia. Uh, we have another product, a novel product, which, was, which is uh, uh, unique for us, for BioBee, uh, and it is called BioArt Line. As you can see here, these uh, tapes, which are spread are on the crop. And the nice thing about them is that the, the Artemia is already pre-glued uh, to the tape. Uh, and there is a, a thin line of Artemia on the tape and you can install it and it has a much longer durability in the crop and you can use it for about four to six weeks uh, in a single release. So it's very efficient and very, very nice. You can see Artemia is glued here on the top of this tape uh, and you can really talk to our uh, salespeople and, and get uh, more details on, about this product. Uh, it can be used in many different crops, in eggplants and in tomatoes, and all the suspended crops are suitable for this system. Now let's talk about cannabis, which is obviously uh, is very popular now, nowadays. Uh, and we can also apply the same principle using Artemia to establish a standing army. In this case, we use Swirsky and Macrolophus pygmaeus, but we can use other predators. And the idea is to use uh, Artemia and to establish, again, a standing army to control many different pests that may be in the crop. We can apply uh, the Artemia using this shaker, which is called BioArt Feed. Uh, we can use it as a foliar release directly on, on, the, on the foliage. Uh, as you can see here, an example releasing Macrolophus pygmaeus uh, alongside with the Artemia. Uh, again, we can do it very early on in the crop. Uh, and you can uh, release Swirsky. Again, you can see a very nice population of Swirsky on the crop. Uh, Macrolophus pygmaeus, uh, all of these are easily observable by our, uh, by our trained technician and uh, field service guys. Uh, this is an example of releasing bio art line uh, in the crop in cannabis. And uh, you can get very nice results with that product. Uh, one more example of, of the same principle, we can apply it uh, even in, in other crops such as watermelons or even melons or different crops which are even outdoor crops. Uh, and you can release uh, Amblyzer Swirsky alongside with Artemia. And here you can see an example in watermelon, you can see how many Swirskis are present at the crop just based on feeding them with a bio art feed. 
And when you have such a nice population of Swirsky, really you get a very nice control of spider mites, of white flies, of many different crops. And, and we have uh, different uh, methods to apply it in different crops. So you just need to give a, a call to our guys, to our sales uh, people or to our technicians, and you can get all the, the full details for that. Uh, let me just uh, finish by saying that we have uh, other natural enemies that control uh, other crops. We have a unique product of Anagyrus soidococci which is a parasitic wasp to control mealybugs. We use it in orchards and we use it in vineyards. Uh, and this is a unique product for Biobee. And it can, can come with a complementary predator, uh, Cryptolemus montrezeri, which is a, a mealybug destroyer. And we are very, uh, very active in uh, countries such, such as South Africa and uh, Chile and uh, in the United States. And we are uh, active in, as I said, in vineyards and orchards, and we have very good results with controlling uh, mealybugs. Uh, again, this is something that we have a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience. And uh, if it's something that uh, interests you, uh, then I encourage you to uh, talk to our people uh, at Biobi. So uh, to conclude, um, Biobi is a, is a company which believe, uh, which, well, basically we think that IPM is the future. Uh, we want a healthier environment, we want sustainable agriculture, and we are striving to achieve that by developing new products. And uh, we always uh, believe that the, the best thing is to support the grower uh, and, and to be at the field. And, and I think this picture really represents the future uh, the way we see it. So I really thank you for your time, and I hope that it was interesting for you. And uh, please uh, contact uh, Biobee for further for details. Thank you and have a nice day.